September 4th, 2017. Today is Labor Day. This video is called Mutant Albino Leaf Honeysuckle. Alright, with it being Labor Day, most humans at work have this holiday to take a day off in appreciation, I guess, for the hard work that we do. But, who doesn't take a vacation from work are the plant kingdom and the animal kingdom and everything else. So now this is a mutation that has lost its green pigment, the uh, chlorophyll, that produces the energy for the plant to grow and live in conjunction with the sun. So, I know thousands of plants. I could identify a ton of them. And I was going to wait for this to flower, but I was afraid it would never bloom this year or either die. Because sometimes that's what happens to the mutations. They're just weaker. So I wanted to document this. But, like I said, I could identify thousands of plants according to the genus, species cultivated varieties and the selected clones that uh, mankind cultivates now what I kinda the green one right here this is definitely a seedling of a honeysuckle seedling I think I got it nailed to Lonicera Tartarica which is the Tartarian honeysuckle now it looks very similar to this mutation over here that I found Look how tiny the leaves are. It's a tiny little plant compared to my thumb. And let's get as close as we can here. I'm going to take it out of the sunlight because it looks a, a little bit whiter. This is my first albino mutation that I have found. That's the back side of the leaf. If you could see, they got these tiny little hairs on the edges. Now, sometimes the albinos can't take the sun, so they get a sun scald. Let's put that other one right next to this. I think I'm pretty sure I nailed it down to the honeysuckle. Now this is a little bush and I might just leave this out here on its own and over winter in the burbs of Cleveland, Ohio, USA to see if it will take. Or I could take a chance and dig it up and try to overwinter it in a pot in the greenhouse. Now. These, like I said, it's Labor Day, and these plants don't take a break. And what they're still doing, which is, I think this is what's happening, is these mutations are being caused by Fukushima. I'm just getting record number mutations. And how else can you explain this? With it melting down and spewing these carcinogenic isotopes into our environment. Now the problem with these isotopes is some of them are water soluble so that means they're able to be uptaken into the plant through the root system. Now I don't know what's causing these mutations whether it's the seed that's affected or once it starts growing the whole plant is affected but it almost looks like no maybe is that uh, an albino stem I don't think so I, it's hard to tell that will become woody in time but what these plants are not taking a break from is pulling these water soluble isotopes out of the ground now 
one of the most frightening of the isotopes is cesium-137 because it's got a half-life of 30, 30 years. So that means it's going to take over 300 years for it to break down, actually into other isotopes. So they, they just don't disappear, just like Einstein's theory that energy is neither created or destroyed. It just takes another form. So these uh, isotopes are going to be around for quite a while doing quite a bit of damage. Now these are plant cancers. Now as you can see, let's go, I'll shade this a little bit. And I'll put down a leaf of a dahlia next to it. Now see the difference in color? That's supposed to be green. And this is the albino. Because it's white. Now, a long time ago I took a data processing class. And what cancers are is the DNA is corrupt. It doesn't follow the original code and that's why it has abnormal growth. It all goes down, that growth is in the meristem, which is in the tip of the plant that keeps growing, just like you have a meristem in your, your uh, nail right there. And according to diseases and deficiencies, you're going to have a nail that looks different because it's the meristem, it's always growing, always giving new growth. Well, what this reminds me of from computer class is a syntax error. And by definition, it's a character or string incorrectly placed in a command or instruction that causes a failure in execution. And that's exactly what's happening over here. The failure of execution is the gene that gives the plant color, the green chlorophyll. Now I still think there might be, I'm not an expert on it, I think there's still maybe, there's, I think there's four layers of cells that make up the, um, the layer of plant tissue here. And maybe all three of them are, are white, and that one of them is green. Unless all four are white, but if all four were white, it would not be able to grow at all. Because there would be no chlorophyll in it for it to grow. But look at the veins. The veins still have a little green in it. This might be one of the most unusual ones just for leaf effect that I found this year. No, I'm pretty sure this is going to be a, a honeysuckle. It looks like it. Only way to tell those when it blooms. Now, would that be a, an interesting contrast? Because some honeysuckle flowers like this have like a reddish purple color. That would be a pretty interesting look to this plant if I can keep it growing. Quite sad, but yet quite beautiful because it's just so unusual. There you go, maybe I'll name it Fukushima Flame. Because it looks like a little candle light. Another addition to the mutant garden. Can you hear that bumblebee? I'll give you a little treat today.
he stays on. See, they're not taking a break on Labor Day. Those, they're still working hard. With a little flying ant. Mother Nature keeps working hard even on Labor Day because they don't know any better. That's how they must survive. We're taking just vacations from it all. Having a good old time. While Mother Earth just is being destroyed all around us. <laughs> 